I shall raise up for myself a faithful priest who will act in accord with my heart and my mind, says the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, we celebrate today here at the parish a feast of a memorial saint, excuse me, a Norbertine saint, Saint Isfrid, bishop of our order, who lived in the late 12th century. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty, eternal God, your bishop, St. Isfrid, refulgent with your assistance, devoutly loved and strenuously defended your church. Grant, we beseech you, that obedient to the Holy Gospel, we may faithfully serve your people. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Colossians. Now I rejoice in my sufferings for your sake, and in my flesh I am filling up what is lacking in the afflictions of Christ on behalf of his body, which is the church, of which I am a minister in accordance with God's stewardship given to me to bring to completion for you the word of God, the mystery hidden from ages and from generations past. But now it has been manifested to his holy ones, to whom God chose to make known the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. It is Christ in you, the hope for glory. It is he whom we proclaim, admonishing everyone and teaching everyone with all wisdom that we may present everyone perfect in Christ. For this I labor and struggle in accord, in accord with the exercise of his power working within me. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. I waited, waited for the Lord, who bent down and heard my cry, and put a new song in my mouth, a hymn to our God. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. Sacrifice and offering you do not want, but ears open to obedience you gave me. Holocausts and sin offerings you do not require. So I said, here I am. Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. Your commands for me are written in the scroll. To do your will is my delight. My God, your law is in my heart. Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. I announced your deed to a great assembly. I did not restrain my lips. You, Lord, are my witness. Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. Hallelujah, hallelujah,
I am the good shepherd, says the Lord. I know my sheep and mine know me. Alleluia. 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 The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. At that time, they watched Jesus closely and sent agents pretending to be righteous who were to trap him in speech in order to hand him over to the authority and the power of the governor. They posed this question to him. Teacher, we know that what you say and teach is correct and you show no partiality, but teach the way of God in accordance with the truth. Is it lawful for us to pay tribute to Caesar or not? Recognizing their craftiness, he said to them, Show me a denarius. Whose image and name does it bear? They replied, Caesar's. So he said to them, Then repay to Caesar what belongs to Caesar, and to God what belongs to God. The Gospel of the Lord. So we are to render to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God. But doesn't everything really belong to God? Ultimately, there's really nothing that really belongs to Caesar. This particular passage and its interpretation and application has served from the very beginning of the church as a foundation for our understanding of the relationship between civil society and government and the church an institution which is both human and divine. And everything really ultimately does belong to God. And this is why we can be assured that in giving everything we have and that we are back to God, we are living in fulfillment of the gospel and of the commandments and the Lord's desire for us. In his will, we find the strength to give up everything as needed and necessary for the good of our salvation, for the spiritual benefit of others that we live with and serve and love. All of these things are important for us. So, indeed, our involvement with civil society and politics and government is necessary on a human level. And when that involvement is inspired by the gospel and God's grace and the truth of the commandments, then we and the church herself are most effective in this relationship between the church as a spiritual society, divinely instituted and guided by the Holy Spirit, and government, politics, civil society. So indeed, and we know there have been many occasions in the church from the very beginning especially, where there has been open conflict between the church and her mission and her beliefs and civil society. Obviously we know the first you know, three centuries of the church's existence in the Roman Empire, the church was openly persecuted, many martyrs, many people courageously witnessed to the faith. The faith is as true now as it was then, and in a certain sense, obviously, we still continue to face persecution. This has always been the story throughout the long history of the church, which brings us to today's saint, Saint Isfrid, Norbertine Bishop, 12th century. Interestingly, he is one of three Norbertine saints who were all bishops of the same diocese in northern Germany in succession. Evermode, Isfrid, and Ludolf, all three, one after another, three straight Norbertine bishops in Ratzburg in northern Germany. And there, their ministry as bishops, and of course as Norbertines as well, was to convert a pagan people up in that part of, you know, northern Europe, the Wends, they were sort of like a tribe, a pagan tribe. And the Norbertines, not only the, the bishops, but also the confers were very successful in winning these people to Christ, bringing them into the church. In addition to that beautiful ministry of bringing souls to the church, St. Isfrid and others of that same time period, the 12th century and into the 13th century, many bishops had to deal with this complexity of the relationship between church and state civil society and government. And in the 12th century, there were many occasions of conflict. 
there were many times where civil authority had worked against the church and was limiting the church's freedom. This is why religious freedom is not just a 21st century issue. This goes all the way back to Christ himself. And when I say all the way back to Christ himself, I mean that is really why in today's gospel this statement is so important. Jesus himself, not just his church, Jesus himself established a different relationship that people would have with the church, with himself, as they would with civil society. Obviously, when we think about all the ways, all the saints that have so courageously witnessed, given their lives indeed, for the truth of the church and the church's freedom, freedom to do what she needs to do for the salvation of the world, we need to publicly worship God as we do here in our beautiful church this morning. We need to praise and thank him in a community. We need to be able to live by God's commandments and laws unhindered and unimpeded by civil authority or civil laws. These things are so important to us and it's because we have faith. We have faith, that is the big difference. That is where St. Isfrid and other bishops and other saints like him, men and women alike, had great courage to witness, to defend the freedom of the church, to defend the church's mission when it was attacked or when obstacles were placed by civil society or authority. This has always been the case, but thanks be to God that the church has always had those courageous men and women who have done you know, great, great work to defend the church and promote the gospel. And we, in our own day, and in our own way, we too must stand up, speak up, do what we can to continue to defend the truth of the gospel and the mission and the beauty of the church, certainly. So may St. Isfred intercede for us, especially for all Norbertines, that we may have the strength of faith to be courageous in defending the church and the gospel in all circumstances, and may that beautiful witness that we can give bring peace and consolation to us and bring God's grace of salvation to the world. Trusting in God's eternal love, we now offer our prayers of petition to him. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and all bishops and priests, that the Holy Spirit may bless their efforts to continue to preach the gospel and defend the freedom and rights of the church. Let us pray to the Lord. For all government leaders, may the Holy Spirit inspire them in working to protect religious freedom throughout our world and the dignity and sanctity of human life from conception through natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who are sick or suffering, may the Lord console them in their time of need by his grace of healing and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. For our parish community, that we may be continually strengthened in our witness to the truth by the grace and power of God that comes to us through prayer and the sacraments. Let us pray to the Lord. For all those who have died, especially for the repose of the soul of Stephen Hillis, for whom this Mass is being offered, may they enjoy eternal life in heaven and behold the face of God. Let us pray to the Lord. Loving Father, we thank you for your faithfulness. Give us the courage to continue to witness to our faith and defend the church in all that we do. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life.
Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. <clears throat> Lord, we offer you our gifts and humbly pray that following the example of St. Isfrid, our service in your church may always glorify your name through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Isfrid, you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. <clears throat> In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, 
and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with this Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Isfrid, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Kevin, our Bishop, Timothy and Ton as assistant bishops, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
communion antiphon, the Lord says, give to Caesar what belongs to Caesar and to God what belongs to God.
Let us pray. Nourished by your heavenly gifts, we ask you, Lord, that always clinging to your word, we may hasten the coming of your kingdom through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Saint Michael. Be archangel, defend us in battle. Be our defense against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, thrust into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin. O Jesus, man's Redeemer, come, eternal crown of all the saints, upon this joyful festival day, heed yet more graciously our prayer. O Christ, our King and tender Lord, all glory ever be to you, who with the Holy Spirit reign, with God the Father's might soon.